Hello everyone, welcome back to another Get Creative with Substack video with me, Claire Venus. I am an engagement consultant and mentor and I absolutely love Substack. So I've started making a series of videos, really short videos, just with some of the features of Substack. So um, hopefully it should be really easy for you to just dive into the video that you need right here and right now. So today we're going to talk about headers and footers um, and we're going to have a little look at what we should do in terms of should we leave them as permanent headers and footers should we change with the post what about paid subscribers what do those headers and footers look like so we'll dive in i'll share my screen last week when i shared my screen it took the video of me away hopefully it doesn't do that oh hmm. there we go okay so if we go into posts and I'm just going to go into one that I have scheduled for this week, um, which is a really handy tool. I absolutely love the scheduling tool. It gives me a bit of a deadline as well. So I'll probably tinker with this one before it actually goes out. But if it went out, it would be fine. So once you're inside a post or you can get to it in settings, you can edit your email header and footer just here. It's going to give you the option of a banner image. I'm not going to talk about those today. I actually think my banner image isn't working for some reason, so I'll go back to that. So this is the header for free subscribers on posts sent to everyone. So this would only appear if somebody received this via email. This isn't going to appear in the Substack app or on desktop. So you only get to see this piece of information if you're receiving the email into your email inbox. The reason that I stress that is because it's really important for you to look at how many people are reading in the app and on desktop versus email, because if you're putting important information here, then obviously there's only a certain percentage of your readers that are gonna get it. For me, it's about 50-50. So it's not super important information, um, but it's nice to read and I still don't feel fully aligned about it. I think it's confusing to have this here, but the people in the app don't get it. And if you land on desktop, you don't get it. So I'm constantly wondering and thinking about what to do about headers. But so far, it reminds people that they're reading Creatively Conscious and um, by me on Substack. That link will just take them to my home feed, my publication homepage. And then I'm saying the best user experience for community connection is in the Substack app because I'm a massive fan of the app and keeping your email inbox spacious and tidy. I actually only use email for work, so I don't subscribe to any brands. I don't let people email me unless like they've had an offer or something like that. And then I might sign up for that, but I always then unsubscribe because I just have so many work emails. I just think it needs to be spacious. So I've said... Feel, please feel free to share or subscribe as a free or paid subscriber to join a beautiful community of like-minded souls. So the, the pink highlight here is because my hex code is set to pink. Um, and those obviously, every time I do a URL and link to anything, then they'll be in pink. And then I've put a photograph of me here to remind people who I am, especially if people are signing up and they're new to who I am. This is um, my local secondhand bookshop, what a magical setting. I love that photo. I still feel like, do I just put that at the start of every post? But not only would it be more work to do that unless I duplicated a post, I'll talk about that in another video. It's like, I don't, I just don't know if I want to start every email, you know, with a photo of me for the people that are reading in the app and are really familiar with who I am. So I've got to kind of think that one through. And then we'll just jump down to the footer. So. There's a few different options. So for the free subscribers, I've kept it really simple and I've just linked to my introdu introductory post. So I created an introductory post called Let's Cozy Round the Fire, um, something like that. And it got a load of people commenting and saying hello to each other in the comments, which was gorgeous. So I just linked to that because I feel like if people are new to me, and they're receiving this in email, that's a really nice way for them to kind of meet some of the other people that subscribe to me. I don't know that all of them do, but it was a really nice offer. So that's in there. It reminds them they're a free subscriber. Obviously, there are a lot of people that are still very confused about 
what Substack is, what is a free subscription, what is a paid for subscription, is it like Medium, is it a membership, is it a blog, is it a newsletter? So I'm just trying to remind everybody and signal to people, you know, what they're receiving and why. I don't know whether anybody has signed up to me like and paid accidentally, but I think it would be really easy to do that. So anyway, that's in there and the upgrade to paid button I've put in as well. And just to show you how to edit that, if you wanted to edit it, it's really easy. So say if I decided, OK, I'll just stick that on another line. Um, I could also and I'll do this with you. I could also put an image in here really easily. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Um, so I'll just stick in my Substack divider there at the bottom. I use this a lot through my posts. So that feels quite nice to end with that um, page break there. So if we go into the next one I'm going to talk to you about is this free subscribers on free preview posts. So this took me a little while to wrap my head around. And the best advice that I can give you is to actually sign up with a different email address to your own emails, to your own Substack. So I'm signed up to my own Substack as a free subscriber. So it makes a lot of sense when I see an email in its entirety that my free subscribers will get, especially if I'm doing a push for paid subscribers or I'm wondering how it all feels. I think that it's really cool that you can just email paid subscribers direct, but I always try and put some of the article in front of the paywall. So there's some value for the people that are subscribing for free especially people that are reading in the app. Otherwise, when they're scrolling through, we'll just see it's for paid subscribers and they'll scroll past. So, yeah, I don't know. People have got different opinions about it because lots of people say it's annoying to get a preview through. But if you're, at, if you're offering value, which I try and do, I don't think it's that annoying. I often get people restacking parts of my preview email that aren't paid subscribers. So my advice would be, to do that and to let people know that that's what you're doing. So to say that in the top of the post, like I've made one third of this free in front of the paywall. So I say to them, if you'd like to have a look at what I share behind the paywall, you are so welcome. Here's my list of member benefits and some information about the small community I've created. And then I put a photo of my daughter sort of walking up this beautifully um, sunlit staircase in my mum's garden. It's just a really nice photo. And I, I feel like it's quite inviting to come on up the stairs my membership is now called a sort of fairy tale. So I'm going to put that in here because I decided that about a month ago and I have updated it most places. Um, and we'll just go a sort of fairy tale. Thanks for letting me do my work on the call. Um, so I'll leave that there because I think it just signals again, like that's what it's called. And it gives a bit of a sort of signal and an essence of what the space is about. It is quite a fairy tale space and a space for the slow lived dreamers. Um, so if we go into um, paid subscribers on posts sent to everyone. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, this, yeah, there's only one way to describe it really. I'm presuming here, I'm making a big presumption that my paid subscribers know who I am and they've made the decision to subscribe to me because they know who I am and they've been reading my free content. Now I know that isn't always the case because some people pay straight away and they don't really know who I am, but it's very rare. So what I'm saying is thanks so much for being here. You're welcome to introduce yourself in this post. So that's the link to the other post that I mentioned, the Cozy Around the Fire post. You can share my Substack page with others and they'll have immediate access to all my free posts. If you want to learn more about what I write about here, I've created this handy contents page for you. So my contents page, and I've shown you guys this before, is um, centralized in the, um, in the front of front center of my home feed. So if we go there, it's just here. That's what that post is. So yeah, it sort of reminds people, okay, like this is the type of stuff she posts about. Um, these are the sections. I've got like contact me and stuff like that on there. I've got the cozy around the fire post. So I'm really just trying to organize people's experience because I feel like it's it can be confusing depending on where people kind of find 
your Substack. I love that they call this preamble. It's funny. Um, okay, so back to this one. We've done the header. Um, oh, no, we've not done this yet. So header for paid subscribers on paywall posts. Ooh. Paid subscribers and posts sent to everyone. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I read that wrong. So paid subscribers on posts sent to everyone. Yeah, I'm not actually sure what they mean because when I get my own emails, I get this one. So maybe I need to have another look at that because I'm not exactly sure when that one would go out. Maybe that goes out when you tick that free preview box. I'll come back to you on that. We'll carry on. Um, so the paid subscribers, thanks so much for being here and supporting my big dream. You can share posts and archive by hitting the share button below. So I'm just asking them for that extra bit of support if they like to share my post there. Um, quite simple. So here's the one that we just edited. Here's the one that just says, thanks so much for supporting me here on Substack. Give a gift subscription. I do need to write more on that but I think I must have been confused because I, do, I don't know when that one comes through because it's post sent to everyone but this is paid paid subscribers on paywall post so it should just be my paid members that get this one where I'm saying thanks so much for supporting me here on Substack your time spent here is an absolute gift to me and my family and I mean that from the bottom of my heart I love it you can send these test emails you just get yourself so bamboozled so you can send them and that's absolutely fine but I still think there is like a little bit of confusion. I'll show you why. So when we go into this one, so remember, we just edit the head and footer and then we go in, we can go into um, edit it from there. So if I continue with this one and unschedule it, which is obviously always handy, you don't have to do that. You can just literally type into it and edit it and it'll stay, um, it'll keep saving. But this one, if we continue that, so the only options we've got are paid subscribers, founding members only, free subscribers only, everyone. So I, I usually use the everyone button or the paid subscribers only button, those two. If I said everyone and it's got a paywall in it, then I presume it would still stop at the paywall. But what I usually do, and this one is for everyone, is keep it to everyone, allow comments for everyone. That's all fine. You can obviously send via email and the Substack app and schedule, which is what I've done. But yeah, that bit is a little bit confusing. Um, yeah, so... I just don't, I can't work out, to be honest, and I'll do some tests. I can't work out where that other header and that other footer would come into play from what they're saying here. Thanks, Substack, for being super clear on that one. Um, I'll reschedule that just so you can see what I do when I schedule a post. So that's for everyone. I've tagged it, Substack tips. I've gone through tags before, but these are my tags, or you can type a new one in. That's how the preview will look, which is handy, because when you see that, you can see what image is going to pull through, and that'll show through in your media assets. If you want to share across social media, we'll schedule it. I always schedule these for Friday morning, my time at 3 a.m. because I have some American readers that read it when it goes out at their night time. So there we go. We'll schedule that. And then I'll just pop into settings because you can also get to the headers and footers this way. So if you go into your settings, um, and have a little scroll down. Navigation. Be somewhere. <laughs> Gone past it. They often move this about in settings. Right, okay. So this one, and then it just takes you to the same space. I've really confused myself about those two headers. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Head of a paid subscribers on post sent to everyone. Head of a paid subscribers on paywall posts. I just feel like that's the same thing. Anyway, um, I will stop sharing my screen. If you have any questions on headers and footers and how you'd like to use them, 
feel free to drop me a line in the comments below. I am I'm really curious around how we can make them work for us. I think if everybody's reading your Substack emails in their email inbox, then there's loads that you can do there. And also, also it saves you some time. Um, every time you make a post, obviously, you know that you've got that information already set in your header and footer. If lots of people are reading in the app like they are with me, so it's like 50-50, and I think it's actually swaying more towards the app now, then it's less clear. And I do feel like, for me, the best thing to do is going to be to have a draft post for my kind of standardized posts that I send a lot and then have everything in. So have all the buttons in and um, have the page breaks in, have the messages around come to cozy around the fire, have the messages around um, whether you can, you know, what you get as a paid, if you upgrade to pay, those sorts of things. And I've just I'm just not there yet. I just don't know exactly want us what I want to say in the body of an email versus the header and the footer so I'll do some more figuring out and I'll make another video when I have decided I'll see you all next week thanks so much for watching